that was the inn. I don't remember where exactly we're going right now. Look at the journal, I guess. All right, oh yeah, we have to go talk to Klaus. Not there. I don't remember where Klaus lives. Andreas, I had heard you were back in Tassing. God bless you. Good morning, Father Thomas. You're not going to try to get me to come to Mass, are you? I would hope that in the many years since you were with us in Tassing, attending Mass has become a habit. Matt, and I'm sure Master Maller isn't staying through Sunday. Hopefully the visit will be less eventful than your last. Tassing has enough going on as it is. We have our bonfire for St. John's Eve tomorrow night. People get up to all sorts of mischief. The feast and celebration of St. John the Baptist, beginning at the sunset on June 23rd, coincides with Midsummer's Day and the Summer Solstice. And then it's my job to hear the confessions in the days that follow. Not to mention the grumbling the peasants are making. That's just talk, brother. No need to scare our guest with such things. I'm sure if there is trouble, Master Mahler will be the first to stick his nose in it. It's easy enough for you to come and go. You don't have to live with the consequences. After Ferenc was executed, Father Abbot made Matthew his new prior. Ferenc may have been annoying, but Matthew is even worse. Thanks for that. Would have been better for everyone if you had simply allowed Brother Piero to die. After all, he only had a few years left anyway. Nothing to say for yourself. Friends, friends, there's no need for such ire. I... Forgive me, Father Thomas. I let my passions get the better of me. Besides, that's not even why I came down here. I actually came to speak with you on the abbot's behalf, Andreas. Father Guerneau would like to invite you to come to the library tomorrow morning if you're interested in purchasing some of our books. The abbey's finances must be dire if Father Guerneau is selling off the library. I could take a look. The past few years have been good for me. Good. These books aren't of much value anymore. Perhaps they will be to you. The library is not quite ready yet. So it does not see much use. You could come by tomorrow morning. Mother Illuminata can show you what's available. Mother Illuminata? Yes. Since Mother Cecilia passed a few years ago. Well, I suppose Illuminata knows the library better than anyone. I can't guarantee I'll buy anything. Oh, I don't care. Father Guerneau just sees this as an opportunity. And Andreas, I apologize for my harsh words before. It was rash. Brother Piero was a pious man and a skilled artist. We miss him. I appreciate you saying that. I miss him too. Excellent. I'm so glad you two were able to work things out. Oh, Father Thomas, you have a moment to speak inside the church. Yes, I think so. Why? A private matter. Oh, of course, of course. Until tomorrow. God bless you, Andreas. All right, so we have an invitation tomorrow. Here we go. This is the place we had to go. Where's Klaus? Ah, they have a new daughter, Magdalene. Andreas. Wow, so you're not really mad, are you? No, I was mad years ago. Now I'm just annoyed and disappointed. First Bert and then Marie just after Magdalene was born. My wife always thought highly of you. Can't believe you didn't write back after I told you they had passed. I didn't know what to say. Something. Anything. I'm sorry your son died, Klaus. I'm sorry your wife died, Klaus. How are you? Too late for that now, though. Boop-de-boo-boo. -boo. 
Oh, hello. He likes you. Your business seems to have grown. What are you printing? Twelve articles. They were originally written by Swabian peasants who were demanding changes from their lords. Freedom from serfdom, freedom to hunt and use the woods as God intended, freedom from compulsory labor. Abolition of the inheritance tax, fair appraisal of rent, the return of property to common use and ownership. Varia isn't Swabia, but their complaints are just as valid for the peasants of Tessing. Swabia, former duchy in the Southern Holy Roman Empire. It was reformed as a Swabian circle in 1512. It borders Bavaria to the west, the Swiss Confederacy to the south, and Austria to the southeast. The laws may not be just, but they are the laws. I fear the people of Tassing are putting themselves in peril. They're already in peril. Many of them are becoming desperate. The abbot has been squeezing the peasants for years. Now he's squeezing the townsfolk, and we're pushing back. Their cause is righteous, Andreas. If you haven't seen the Gartners lately, you should visit them. And Otto had you print these. Yes, why? Well, I didn't think he could read. He can't, but just about everyone else in town can. He speaks, I print. Just trying to do my part, I suppose. I'm sorry, I'm still not in the mood for this late reunion. Come back for dinner tomorrow. Go to the commons, hear what Otto has to say. Of course, I'll see you then. Be good while we're gone, Magdalene. Will you be good? Just skipping over food, I guess. All right, so that's a bummer. So many people. Everyone listen. We all know why we're here. Nothing I'm going to say will be a surprise. Nothing I'm going to say hasn't already been spoken behind closed doors, whispered to your neighbors. Nothing I'm going to say is untruthful, so it's time we started saying it openly. Year after year, the Abbey has found new ways to tax the peasants. Piece by piece, the Abbey has taken away our rights to use God's forests to support our families. Law after law gets heaped upon us, restrictions on how we can pay rent, limits on where we can move, who we can wed. And now the death tax, which has once claimed only our best animal and garment, takes half our estate. No consideration for widows, no consideration for children. What about the town council, the Rathaus? A common, uh, a community hall where the people meet, typically a council that governs day-to-day -day affairs under the authority of a lord. Oh, that was Ulrich, I didn't even notice. Surely that is a sign that the abbot wishes to share his power, to listen to our grievances. You have a good heart, Ulrich. You always want to see the best in people. But no. The council is a way for the abbot to defy us, to pit a favored few against the many. This is not charity. No, only greed and desperation drive Father Garneau. You'd think that if the abbot could, he'd steal a dead man's soul from heaven itself. And when we protested, what did Father Garneau do? He locked the shrine of St. Moritz. He won't allow the people of this town, the farmers of this land, to pray before the relic. Now, when we most need the intercession of our saint, the abbot has shut us out. Father Garneau's actions aren't just, they aren't Christian. We've endured this abuse for too long. It's time we let the abbot know we won't take it anymore. Too right. Here, here. Yeah, this has to stop. Let's fix this. Stop. This is foolish. Soldiers are already patrolling nearby towns. If you push against the abbey, you'll incur the duke's wrath. You could get the town raised and everyone killed. Anna's right. The duke is a powerful force in Bavaria. They're playing a dangerous game, Otto. You laws are no match for trained soldiers. If you don't relent, you'll be ground into dust like the Swabian peasants. We'd always grind you up instead, Lenhart. We must stand for what is right. God is on our side. 
Don't be shy. Speak up if you have cause. We won't be overrun. The peasants of Salzburg... Oh, oops. Uh, if the people can get the Archbishop of Salzburg to listen to them, then we can do the same with the abbot. Master Andreas, do you think my family in Salzburg is all right? Don't worry. The civilian losses were minimal. They're probably fine. Oh, no. Maybe we should go to Salzburg after this. Enough is enough. We can't stand by while the abbot treats us poorly. People all over Swabia are taking back their God-given rights. Why shouldn't we do the same? A righteous cause. Martin's right. We deserve better. Well spoken, Martin. Everyone ought to consider what he said. Ah, hiccups. Martin has proved dependable these last few years. But if the words of men can't persuade you, perhaps a sign from a greater power will. The abbot may have locked us out of our saint's shrine, but God will, has shown me that he is with us. I think that's all I should say for now. Thank you all for coming. Interesting. Is he a charlatan? Does he actually have visions or anything? Or is he, uh, is he lying to get favor? Good day, Andreas. Clara, it's been too long. It's lovely to see you again. Hello, Andreas. I'm surprised to see you after your long absence from Tassing. At this rate, we thought we'd never see you again. I was gone too long. I'm sorry for not sending word of my arrival. You certainly did pick an odd time to visit. We're in the middle of a strange season. Ah, you found the Gertners. Your speech was very rousing, Otto. I swear you get better each time. Are you looking for trouble, Otto? Of course not, but I understand what might happen if the abbot doesn't listen to reason. Even so, the people here can't go on like this. Something has to change. I need to understand how... Motherfucker. Okay, I can't even click the screen. I don't understand how every single time I try to persuade anyone, I just get nothing, so... Don't quite feel comfortable discussing it with you, Mahler. No offense. Besides, I'd like to be I'd like it to be a surprise for everyone, especially the abbot. Anyway, Andreas, you and yours should come by the house for supper. We'd be delighted to have you. Sound good to you, Casper? Yes, Master Andreas, I'm starving. Our table is a little sparse lately, but we'll be sure to feed you well. Thank you. We'll see you there. Alright. Time to eat. Hello again, Andreas. We're about to sit down for supper. Care to join? It would be my pleasure. It's truly a blessing to have everyone back together again, if only briefly. Keep an eye on that boy of yours, Andreas. See that he minds how much he takes. Young boys eat too goddamn much. Peter, stop that. Andreas is our guest. Why don't you lead us in grace? Fine. Bless us, O Lord. And these your gifts, which we are about to receive from your bounty. We pray again for our beloved Christine, gone now these many years. And also for my father, taken from us by the merciless greed of that bastard abbot. Peter. Uh. Forgive me, Lord. And please help me to forgive those who have wronged us. Through Christ our Lord, amen. Master Andreas, why are we the only ones with bread? Andreas, it's so good to have you at our table again. 
And with another guest, is this young man your assistant? Kaspar, yes, he's my apprentice. Ah, that would explain why I saw him writing in that little journal. I remember you did the same thing when you lived here. You still draw on your journal, Andreas. I've been trying to spend more time on the land. It's hard to be in touch with God's splendor in a city like Nuremberg. Mom said you know a lot about the proper names for birds and trees and things. <laughs> hmm. How nice that you have the time. And we toil all day, and that despicable abbot is starving us while he sips on his sacramental fucking wine. Lay off him, Dad. He's only just got here. Seems you've fallen on hard times. Oh, no. And you felt the need to point it out, Mahler? The Lord is testing us with another hard season, I'm afraid. You must have noticed that Peter's father is no longer with us. The winter after you left was a difficult one. With all the taxes we owed, it was hard to make ends meet. We didn't. Didn't make ends meet. Dad. A little kindness from the abbot could have spared us, but no. And this year, the whole family's been ill, Andreas, Peter, Ursula, with an, an egg. And me, well... Clara lost a child in child's bed a year ago now. A tragedy. I'm sorry for your loss. Thank you, Andreas. It was some time ago, but, well, such things linger. It was. It seems the Lord rarely looks in on Tassing any longer. That's why it's time for us to take matters into our own hands. We're eating. Please, can we not talk about this now? Yorkir here was married while you were away, Andreas. Really? To whom? To me, Andreas. Why do you else, why else do you think I'm here? Of course, you two make a good match. York has been good to me, but there aren't many other options in Tessing anyway. Been a couple of springs, but I'm still not used to being married. Congratulations, York. I'm happy for you. Thanks, Andreas. It's been our one blessing in a dark season. With children soon to come, I hope. <laughs> what? I don't get it. <laughs> Do you? Uh... Oh, forget it, Ursula. What have you been up to, Andreas? Well, I've been so busy with Kaspar's apprenticeship, I never have any time to myself. Better not have any children, then. I do my best to be helpful. <coughs> Ursula, maybe you should excuse yourself and rest. You're sick. But, Mom, I'm still hungry. Here, Ursula, you can have mine. It's not fair that nobody else gets any bread besides Master Andreas and me. Stop. Ursula, give it back to him. I'm not have I'm going to have people in this town saying we can't feed our goddamned guests. Besides, we have all we all have work to get back to, don't we? Good. Kettle says, I don't like Ursula's coughing, she's doomed. Yeah, and she probably just killed Kaspar by coughing on his bread. Time to get back to it, Andreas. We'll see you and your boy later. Be happy to provide a loan to you and your family, Peter, to help ease your burdens. Peter. God fucking damn it, Andreas. Dad. My debts are between me and the abbot, you hear me? I... I meant no offense, Peter. We'll go now. Alright, well, that didn't go well. So, like, everyone we know is dead. <laughs> Uh, people got married, but there seems to have been, like, a plague or a sickness or a starvation, or a famine, I mean, in town. It's kind of interesting. 
Interesting that this isn't a house that I can interact with anymore. I wonder if she died. I don't remember how to navigate. Definitely uh, in the week since the game, last I played the game, <laughs> I've forgotten quite a bit. Saul, the first monarch of Israel. According to the Old Testament, Saul was divinely rejected from the kingship after disobeying the prophet Samuel's instructions. The sin of Saul, the sin of Saul. Master, did you hear that? Sounded like someone crying out. I think it's Sister Amelie. She's a mystic. She may be having one of her visions. Sister Amelie, are you all right? The Philistines! This is the hand of God! Complaina, complaina! Sister, is something happening at Complain? It's Complain right now. No! Huh. <laughs> Interesting. You're the artist, Andreas. What did you see? See? I don't remember. What did I say? Something about the sin of Saul and the Philistines and complain. Oh, I wish Father Thomas were here. Would you like Casper to get him? If he could, yes. His house is just around the corner. Casper, run and get Father Thomas. Yes, Master Andreas. Your son. My apprentice, but... I think of him like a son. He seems eager to please you. He is quite in er, I feel his devotion is misplaced in me. He sees you as a father, and he wants to honor you as any Christian child should. But as Paul told the Ephesians, fathers must not provoke anger in their children through ill treatment. I have a little advice for mothers and fathers that does not come from scripture. Interesting, we can see her uh, cell now. My world is one of spirit, decoupled from the march of life and death. I see and hear your world turning from this little window, but there are mercifully small glimpses. Mercifully small. This cell allows me to contemplate mysteries without the noise of the outside world polluting my thoughts. Your world is the world of normal lives and normal thoughts. It can be difficult to hear the divine, much less make sense of it. I have no will to be part of that world. I strive to have no will at all, but to subordinate myself to the will of God. When my will is his will, he graces me with visions, confusing though they may be. Certainly, if God is giving you visions, he wants you to understand them. Understanding is a trial, Andreas. Perhaps what God wants for me is to strive and in striving to understand a different, deeper mystery. It is not my place to question his will, but to contemplate the revelations I receive with the help of Father Thomas. Sister, what is that hole in the ground? My grave... I dug it before Father Thomas read me my funeral rites before I was enclosed here. I dig a little more in it each day. Most people find it shocking, but this is my devotion, my vocation. Once someone finds their calling, they must answer it fully. What if the calling is wrong? Of course, how could we do otherwise? We all find ways to stray by inches or feet. We all have our own course to find through this life, but we all end in the same place. I just had to face this reality earlier than most. Your calling in question, Andreas, 
Miss your life. Andreas, thank you for sending Casper. She asked for you. Are you all right, Sister Amelie? Yes, Father. I may have had another vision. Andreas said I spoke of the sin of Saul, Philistines, and the Complain. What do you think it means, Father? Andreas, Caspar, could you excuse us? We appreciate your help, but I must tend to her now in the church. Of course, Father. Good evening. God bless you both. Master Andreas, I'm confused. What did that all mean? I'm not sure, but the last time I heard Sister Amelie have a vision, it was just before the Baron was murdered. What? Do you think Sister Am- Could Sister Amelie be receiving warnings? It is easy to think that, especially after the fact, but I was only present for one murder and one other vision. But what if there's another murder? If that happens, I may revise my opinion. Come, Casper, let's retire for the evening. So we can actually enter this church now. Ah, This must be the labyrinth the church is named after. Interesting. That is pretty interesting. It's pretty neat. I just wanted to check out some of these outer areas just to see there isn't it. That owl. Look at that owl on top of that, <laughs> that house. <laughs> That's very funny looking. None of those have changed. That has not changed. Uh, I'm looking for the inn, but I don't know where the inn is. Oh, hello, Master Mahler. You're looking well. Thank you, Smokey. How are you? I'm well enough, I guess. Vakslav went his way a few years ago, which I suppose was bound to happen. I miss the company sometimes, but now there's no one to keep me from my gossip. No one to tell it to, either. Maybe you should take it to confession instead. Ha! Father Thomas doesn't have the stomach for what I know. Besides, he wouldn't reciprocate. Even if there are some particularly interesting tidbits. Oh? I did see another Imperial Reichspost... Reich, Reichspost? Reichspost courier? Ride from the Abbey a few days ago. Private mail service run by the Thurn and Taxus family and improved by the Holy Roman Empire. Brother Guy dropped the bag once. It looked heavy. The Abbey must be doing better than the Abbot is, is letting on. I heard the Abbey was struggling with its funds. Curious, isn't it? The couriers arrive once or twice a month. Doesn't help that the Abbot has tightened restrictions so close to St. John's Eve, too. Uh, too. Townsfolk could get up to all sorts of mischief then. What sort of mischief? I'd wager Johan and Kat have some corner to play in again. Practically tradition at this point. Veronica and Brigitte might go for a midnight dip by the waterfall, too. They've been swimming out there for years. Now everyone's getting clever, trying to stay out from the abbot's eye. Rightly so, he's an ass. I didn't see you in town comments during auto speech. Aren't you standing with the peasants? Well, their cause doesn't really affect me, does it? I'm as worried as anyone else about soldiers rushing through here, but the new taxes and restrictions don't bother me. I understand why they're upset, but I've been doing fine out here with less than they have. Nothing will change for me if they get their way. I see. Ah, oh, well, enough of that. Thanks for stopping by, Master Mahler. Until later, Smokey. Until then. I like him. He's probably my favorite character so far. In the, I mean, like, in this time frame, you know.
Doesn't look like there's anything new down here. Two innocents. Still don't understand what that means. Wasn't that- wait. That's what, uh, Amelie said the first time. Two innocents. Isn't that what one of the- the crimes- not the crimes, the... I don't remember how to say it. The... Wasn't there something to do with two things? Two innocents? I don't remember the specifics. Getting late, I should get some rest. Kittle says I should invest in a nightcap like that. Yeah, you probably should. I think you'd rock it. Did you drop this, Casper? N no, I don't think so, Master. Erverdit Gervarnt. It's the same script. That script looks beautiful, Master Andreas. Did you write that? You were warned. Warned? What does that mean? I think it's Father Thomas. Warned about what? It has to do with the murder that happened the last time I was here. It's nothing. Don't worry about it. Let's just head up to the library, Casper. All right, Master. Hello, Master Mahler. Good day, Master Mahler. Hello, Andres. All right. Uh, let's see. But their voice slav used time in almost all of the Abby's cooking. Maybe it's because it grows so easily here. Time to head to the library, Abby. Andreas. Brother Guy. What are you doing out here? Father Guerino asked me to inform the townsfolk that the shrine is closed. Can't close the shrine of St. Moritz. Father Abbott has ordered it, Andreas. I must follow his commands. The relic is safe inside the church. We won't stop the pilgrims from visiting, but it is off limits to townsfolk. What? Why? The abbot has had enough of peasants and townsfolk rebelling against the abbey. He is their rightful lord. The abbot has been more than generous, but he will not let the Twelve Articles drivel pass. The abbot refuses to leave the relic at the risk of destruction. The Hand of St. Moritz is the only thing keeping the abbey open. But Tessing relies on St. Moritz just as much as the abbey. What about the faith of the townsfolk? Then they can stop engaging in such heretical and sinful behavior. The abbot is trying to protect the relic, nothing more. No one wants to destroy the hand of St. Moritz, Guy. The abbot is a cruel man, and you're no better defending him. I will do my duty as my vows and my lord command me, Andreas. God bless you. Man, fuck these monks. They're so annoying. Forever Platinum says, here for Pentiment playthrough, even though Armored Core 6 is waiting for me. I just bought it. I just bought it. I'm looking forward to it. We'll see how, we'll see how it goes. Rest in peace, my old friend. Edoc is still alive? Hello? Who is this? It's Andreas, brother Edoc. Andreas Mahler. Oh. Oh, Andreas, the fine young artist from Nuremberg. You flatter me. You are flattered by writing. Yours and brother Piero's both, God rest his soul. It is a blessing to work with talents such as yours and Piero's. And Gabriel and Rupert and Sister Michaela when the nuns helped us with our labors. 
so many years of toil. They're all gone now. I pray they're all at rest with the Lord. Soon I'll be gone. And Brother Guy and all that remain of us are books. But enough of that. How have you been, Andreas? I've been well, thank you. I'm glad to hear it. You seem more at ease now than when I was last here. Do I? Maybe so. May have worked in the scriptorium beyond the limits of this body. Pain my joints and strain my brotherly love for Guy. The scriptorium took my sight and the use of my hands, and when it closed, it also took the pain from my heart. The abbot is content to let me serve the Lord through prayer and contemplation. And so it also contents me. I'm sorry, Andreas, but I must rest now. It's good to hear the voice at Kirsau again. God bless you. God bless you, Brother Edic. I wonder how the gay monks are doing. Have you seen them? Matthew is prior now, so uh, there's the gay prior. Victorian fell into disrepair quickly after Father Grunot closed the library. It's Denna. Greetings, Master Mahler. Hello, sisters of Denna. You're looking like a real artist now. I'm impressed. You must be living like a lord. Uh, not particularly. I've had to travel all over for my patrons. It's been difficult with the revolts. How oh, dreadful. And at least you can get mud on your shoes from beyond a single courtyard. As bitter as ever, I see. Hardly. You just have no tact. Not like you, Andreas. I never chose this life. My family couldn't marry me off to anyone of higher rank, so they donated to the Abbey. The amount was substantial enough for the Abbey to take me in as a nun. I was forced to take the habit. I loved my life before Kirsau. At least you chose your vocation. I was shoved into mine and forgotten. And here you are, muttering as though you aren't the most successful person in Tassing right now. So you flout and disrespect the rest of the sisters, I see. I was young and immature when you last saw me. Don't talk about things you know nothing about. You're lucky to have the life you do, Andreas Mahler. I've grown. I've accepted a lot of these past few years. I hope you can do the same. I need to return to my duties. Bless you, Andreas Mahler. Till later, sister. But bless you, Andreas. It has been too long. I know Father Abbott made it clear you were not to return when you left, but we had hoped to hear from you. Yes, my apologies. You're right. Of course. Good day, Mother Illuminata. This is my apprentice, Kasper Ziegler, from Salzburg. God bless you, Mother Superior. God bless you, young Kasper. Master Mahler. Sister Zdena. I'm sorry, you have to see it in such a state. It sees very little use these days. What happened? After Baron Rothvogel's murder, who had fewer and fewer wealthy patrons, the small number that held out lost interest. It's easier to commission new work from the Guild of St. Luke or individual masters in big cities like Nuremberg. The Guild of St. Luke, regulated trade and sale of art in cities around Europe. Artists who sought to have apprentices and businesses often had to become members for the privilege. Father Gernot saw no reason to keep the scriptorium or library open. Most of the books here have been suffering of neglect. After Mother Cecilia's death, neither I nor Sister Stena had time to maintain our inventory. I would have guessed it was unprofitable years ago. You're not wrong. Without patrons like Baron Rothvogel, even Father Matthias would have been forced to close the scriptorium. As Brother Piero was fond of saying, all things change in time. Now all that remains are books for sale to interested parties, a task that Father Gernot has entrusted to me. And Sister Zdena, of course. I don't even know where to start. Master Andreas, maybe you could find a book for the little Magdalene, something that's not in print yet. Excellent idea, Casper. Parzival. Perhaps Klaus would not object to the romance, given its emphasis on Christian virtues. 13th century retelling of the Arthurian hero Percival, written by Wolfram von Eschenbach. Themes of love and chivalry are prominent in this adventure tale. The German is a little dated, but I'm sure she'll figure it out with Klaus's help. Who knows, maybe it will inspire her imagination. So yeah, I think it's going to be a little bit more tough than that. Yeah. I think these are Latin translations of some of Oregon's homilies. 
Looks like it's partially burned. Prolific first century ascetic and theologian, best known for exe exegetical writings and homilies. Influenced the development of the Trinity and the ransom theory of atonement. Probably not a great gift for a young... Wait. This is the same bookhand as the notes I found when the Baron was murdered. Whoever wrote this is responsible for writing the notes. I need to ask Illuminata about this. Oh, Richard de Berry's Philobiblion. It's a text on the collection and preservation of books. 13th century English priest and later Bishop of Durham, Richard de Bury was one of the first private book collectors and best known for the Philobiblion, which prescribed the care of his books. Maybe this is where Illuminata and Cecilia learned all their tricks. Certainly a good book for a printer's daughter. A copy of Jacobus de Varine's uh, Golden Legend. Every good Christian should know the legends of the saints. The Latin is simple enough that she should be able to read it before long. Albertus Magnus's De Animi Labis. Ostensibly a bestiary, but it contains so much more knowledge on a variety of topics. This could inspire an interest in animals in the natural world. Beautiful illustrations as well. That's probably going to be the one I get, because it has good illustrations. Kettle says, it's weird to think about how long we've had a written language. Yeah, that is kind of crazy. Have you decided on any books to purchase? Yes, just one. The copy of Albertus Magnus's De Anima Libus. Certainly, given your love of nature, you already know all of the information contained inside. Perhaps, but this will be for Klaus Drucker's daughter, Magdalene. Latin may pose a challenge for her, but I'm sure with persistence she can overcome it. Is there anything else you need? Yes, Mother Illuminata. What do you know about this book? I don't know anything. It's the first time I've seen it. Where did you find it? I've seen it on one of the lower shelves. I don't think it's in our catalog burned around the edges. Why? How can I find out where it came from? Who wrote it? If it's not in our catalog, I'm afraid I don't know of whom you could ask. It was a recent edition. The only people who could know about it are Mother Cecilia and Father Matthias. That's a shame, because whoever scribed this book wrote the letters I found while investigating the Baron's murder. The ones in the fine bookhand? Brother Edoch told me about them. Perhaps he knows something about this book. He's been here longer than any of us. Why would a person who wrote the letters have scribed a book in our library? Well, that's the question. Whoever did it is the thread puller. Huh? Someone who is manipulating people at Kirsau and Tassing, pulling at threads to provoke someone into killing the Baron. I thought one of the brothers killed the Baron. He did, but the Baron was lured to the chapter house by someone who knew Kirsau and Tassing's secrets. Well, I'm afraid we can't be of any more help to you in determining the book's provenance. However, as it's not in our catalog and it's already damaged, I doubt Father Abbott would mind if you kept it. Excellent, thank you. I'm glad someone bothered to save it from the flames. Alright, so cool. We have, like, a... We have a, another mystery on our hands. 